What is a normal life? A normal job? Growing up in the north of England, with parents and teaching and joinery, I don't remember ever being exposed to the grand possibilities of advanced scientific exploration. I just remember turning up to the local state school, a mixture of old Victorian style buildings and temporary prefab classrooms. As a focused pupil, eager to learn, but always keen to kick a football about with a few mates in the yard. With some hard graft and a helpful ability to remember numbers and abstract facts, I seemed to ace exams without too much of an issue. Teachers encouraged me to look for opportunities further afield and I was shoehorned towards a career in medicine where high wages were promised in return for many, many years of arduous training. But a lifetime of formal training and dealing with people's ailments for a high paycheck didn't really excite me. I was not a good people person. In fact, I spent most of my time trying to avoid them. I loved to use my hands, communicate with machines, and let my actions speak for themselves. When I was about 17 years old, I found a book called The Chemistry of Life, an old edition by Stephen Rose. It was a book I found lying at the back of a bookshelf and covered in dust. But this was the first time I had read about the wide complexity of biological molecules that exist within each of our cells. The way these natural machines functioned and taught to one another really gave me goosebumps and ticked a lot of boxes for me. I was hooked, intrigued, excited. It was then after reading that book, I knew I wanted to study this, whatever this was. It turned out this was biochemistry. But what did that mean? What does a biochemist look like? How do I become one? With a great deal of interview technique help from one of my teachers at school, I managed to squirm my way in to study the natural sciences at the University of Cambridge. I had my foot in the door. I had a super opportunity to lit study at one of the world's leading universities. All I thought I had to do was work really, really hard for four more years and I would have made it. In reality, it felt a little bit like school, just in bigger, older, dustier lecture theatres, in a practical class every now and again that always seemed to work. Was this what a biochemist was? Lots of reading, essays and experiments that always worked. In the summer breaks at university, I went looking for lab placements to see what real biochemists do for a living. During these placements, I found that I loved the open aspect, the open nature of science to explore and discuss biological questions, design experiments to prove or disprove a hypothesis, trash the latest journal article. I even loved planning my experiments, planning my day around experiments. Being a biochemist was exciting, interesting, and the flexible nature meant I could live my own life, like kicking a football around with a few mates while still enjoying and succeeding in my job in biochemistry. A lab-based master seemed like the next logical step, and there I learnt a lot about failure and experiments not working. Science is rarely a linear process, it seems. But my love for research and stubbornness in the face of adversity led me to apply for a PhD. Helped by advice from my mentors I'd made during my master's projects and summer placements, I managed to get a place at Imperial College London, so it looked like I could become a doctor after all. During my PhD, I learned a host of new skills and lab techniques. I travelled to present my work at international conferences. I helped to write small grants, literature reviews and original research articles. I even got the experience to work abroad in other research labs and research institutes, a world away from the school kid. They just wanted to kick a football around in the schoolyard. But the best moment came when my boss, standing next to me, was in discussion with another research group about a collaboration. Not only did he describe me as a colleague, me, a colleague of an established research scientist, but that was the first time anyone had ever described me as a biochemist. Had I made it? Was I now a biochemist? 
earning a small stipend as a PhD student, and then as a researcher in Germany on short-term work and rental contracts. It meant, however, I didn't quite have a great work-life balance, despite being nearly 30 years of age. I didn't have any stable roots or feel connection to an area. I didn't have a family or own a home. I've always been an early bird, so I've been able to get into the lab early to start experiments. But the open-ended nature to science that I so loved as a naive student meant the days were becoming so much longer than originally planned. Exploring and thinking about biological questions and designing experiments played my thoughts throughout the day, even when I wasn't at work, or indeed awake at times. I loved living and breathing biochemistry and thought that I was our time for the normal life later, right? I moved back to the UK to be close to friends and family for a postdoc, a sort of middle ground between being a student and being a fully fledged lab group leader or professor in the dreamy spires of Oxford, the Department of Biochemistry. I started to live the beginnings of what I would describe as a normal life, with a clear distinction between research work and everything else. Once again, playing football at the weekends with a few mates and becoming a real part of the local community. I was still a biochemist, but now I'd found a way to have that normal life that I was missing. Then COVID hit, the labs closed. Almost overnight, scientific meetings and conferences were canceled. Nothing would be normal anymore. My links with the local community strengthened, but in-person lab work and scientific communications just wouldn't be the same. The distinction between work and life was gone. It disappeared. The labs finally reopened and I got doing, back to doing what I loved at the bench. But science is not a solo endeavour. I find the best scientific discussions occur by chance in having a coffee in the common room or bumping into someone in the corridor. Rather than the vibrant and buzzing social atmosphere at work, the community is, re is replaced by text on a screen emails, Zoom invites, team schedules, Slack messages. It has become isolating and draining, but I feel obliged to go along with it. It'll be back to near normal soon, I tell myself. I still love being a biochemist in the lab with the molecular tools to answer the next biological questions. My career, the people I've worked with and the places it's taken me have been incredible to date. But right now, as we live through a pandemic, and I look at the post-19 world, COVID-19 world to come, I think that later has become now, and it is time for that normal life. Having a family, having a home, kicking a football about with a few mates at the weekend. I'll always be a scientist, a biochemist, but my experiences during the pandemic have taught to be a scientist who can go home to take the dog for a walk without any sort of guilt and no longer put off life for later. Thank you.